I want to take that sort of element of having to be perfect and having to do every single thing for their business off their plate in a way that also aligns with what do I really like to do and what am I really, really good at that other people maybe, you know, aren't so good at all the time. And it really came down to like catching mistakes. I do not think you could go too niche. And I actually think this is going to be something that's going to unlock what you're looking for. I think when people think of people like me, <laughs> like a proofreader or like a copy editor, or whatever, someone who notices mistakes like like right away as being this type of person that I feel like I don't want to show up as. And I really at my core don't feel like my heart is that is my that is me. I'm not sitting here trying to judge people. I'm not trying to shame people while I'm enjoying all the other stuff. Say, hey, this seems out of alignment with everything else I'm seeing about you and your business. This is my superpower. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. I am so excited to have this conversation today. And this really is a conversation. This is not an interview. This is a session where we just get to come together and work through different challenges and questions and things. And there's something super powerful about somebody being willing to do this. And so for all the listeners out there, I just want to take a really quick moment to honor Allison and her courage to do something like this, because not only is it nerve wracking, but it's also just really raw. Like it's raw to come out and be like, here's where I'm stuck. And so I just hope that everyone listening right now just sends like so much beautiful love to Allison for doing this. And I'm so excited to dive in with you. So Allison, give me kind of a, a screenshot of where you are with life, with business, with your aspirations. And then we're going to dive into some of the questions that you have about where you're at. Cool. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Allison Saunders. Um, I'm a mom. I'm a wife. Um, and I'm from New Jersey, and I just turned 48 years old a few weeks ago, and launching my business was actually like a birthday gift to myself. Um, so this is like really intentional and and sort of like a big deal for me to say that like I'm committing to doing this because it's 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 it feels huge to me. So um, so first and foremost, like I'm a mom, and like that's my that's my big why my big purpose and it always has been um i've got three kids they're 20 17 and 12 um so one in college one in high school one in middle school um and um yeah so like this past august i was um very abruptly laid off um from my corporate job um and our household income was like literally sliced in half like overnight um so i have been using the last few months since then to really try to get clear and not sort of give in to the immediacy of needing to replace that income um, and, you know, all the stress that comes along with that, um, you know, that's like right in my face. But I've also, you know, understood that this is also like a rare opportunity to take a time and maybe see like what feels right to me, um, especially for like the next part of my my life, because I've been doing other stuff for 25 years that didn't really speak to my why and my purpose. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I know there are another option, there are other options out there. Um, so yeah, so that's where I am right now. I just, I'm looking for more financial freedom, um, time and energy to put it where and when I want to. So that flexibility, um, yeah. And so, <laughs> so starting a business seems like a good thing to, uh, to try out right now while I have a little bit of time. <laughs> Yes. Try. Okay. Tell me about the business that you are starting because you've actually made some really great progress, which we'll talk about. But what is kind of the vision of the business that does light you up that is in alignment with your values? So it's a proofreading and copy editing business that is geared towards supporting um, other solo business owners, um, entrepreneurs, small businesses, um, you know, hopefully like my ideal client would be other under underrepresented and underestimated founders who are just trying to do all the things. And, you know, um, a lot of time that involves them creating their own copy for their business and their website and their marketing materials and everything, um, because they either don't have the budget or they don't necessarily have the skills or desire to you know, to, to, uh, to do all of the things really well. Um, so like, I want to take that sort of element of having to be perfect and having to do every single thing for their business off their plate. 
in a way that also aligns with when I got really, really clear, I'm like, what do I really like to do? And what am I really, really good at that other people maybe, you know, aren't so good at all the time. <laughs> um, and, and it really came down to like catching mistakes. Like when I'm reading, I can't help but like see mistakes and things. And I'm like, if I'm already noticing these things and I'm reading these materials and everything, and those people might not even know that those are there, is there a way for me to sort of connect the two and actually make a business out of it where I'm helping them and I'm also able to like grow a business that feels good to me too. Oh, I love that. One thing that I want to like kick off on before we dive into questions, because I think you bring up a really good point and it's something I've thought a lot about is when we're in those situations where you kind of said like that immediate need of like actually contributing financially, I've really recognized that there's a huge gap when we're feeling like scarcity And when we're like in that headspace, it's so hard to be creative, right? When we don't feel safe or when we're experiencing scarcity, the thought of being creative feels frivolous, right? Because it's like, we just want like structure and we want certainty. And so um, as we dive into these questions, I just want to like preface that with like, we're going to kind of want to start to think about like, how do we create certainty first and then unlock that creativity once we have that. And so I just wanted to bring that up because... I think a lot of times it's really easy for people that are in financial positions that have a padding or like a landing pad to be super creative and whimsical and to experiment. And that's like amazing, right? But again, when you're facing uncertainty, it's really hard to even think about being creative. Like I want, you want the framework that leads you to certainty and then you can unlock that creativity. So I just want to kind of preface that with this. Lead me into some questions and we'll kind of have this conversation. And I'm just so excited for people to listen. And thank you again for being willing to do this. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. (laughs) Um, So I guess my first question um, is, so considering the fact that I am in such an early stage of entrepreneurship, um, because I have no clients and no income, you know, from it or whatever. Um, How do you feel about, I have this really strong intuition to hire outside support, like as my next step before I go much further. Um, Because, you know, I know myself really well and I know my limitations and I also know, you know, I'm really honest about what I need and I'm not afraid to ask for help. Um, so like, like a coach or a consultant or a strategist, or like, I don't even know the difference between them or whatever. It seems like a big investment in myself and my business to be making at this stage. And yet it almost seems necessary in order for me to keep going and to, you know, um, and to move forward in a way that feels right. So I just wanted to know what you thought about that. I love this question. I have so many thoughts about it. My first thing is, is like, no, don't invest in that way yet until you start to see your own traction and you start to get results for yourself. I just feel like something really powerful happens when we can start to see that like, oh my gosh, this idea has legs and like it's working. And it also just makes legitimizing the investment so much easier when you're like, okay, this is how I'm going to fund this. Um, we're going to talk about this in a minute, but, and I hope you don't mind me sharing this, but you have ADHD just like I do. Right. And so there are different areas that I think would honestly be more supportive and more financially sound for you that wouldn't necessarily cost this like $10,000 investment or this six month coaching thing while you start to get clarity and while you start to get results. And so I will say that there's so much to be said about hiring someone who is way further in the journey that can really guide you through step by step by step. But I feel like you are almost too fresh to even know exactly what type of business you want and to be able to identify clearly who the right mentor is for you, right? I almost think sometimes we've got to feel out like, okay, I want this type of business or I want to serve this type of client. Then we can more easily identify who the next person is that's way further in the journey. But when it's so open-ended, it can be really hard to invest with confidence knowing that that type of person has experience doing the thing that you want to do. Does that make sense? That makes so much sense. And that's the thing I've been wrestling back and forth forth with, but you said so eloquently and so definitively that it absolutely you know, that 
that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I think to it, it's, it, you know, we live in this world where it's so beautiful, right? Cause information is like so accessible, but what I would say for you, especially just starting out is like, start to get results using free information. And then when you find people that give really good free information and you can tell that they're further on the path or they have better systems or things that would support you, that's when you invest. So I think you're just too early to invest. And I wouldn't necessarily want you to put money on the line because some people might be teaching things that are beyond where you're at, or they might right. be so removed from what it feels like to be a beginner again, that they're not mentally going to connect with you, right? Like they're going to be like, oh, this is so easy when it's really freaking hard. And so it's like, I just want for you to have very like, I want for you to have a lot of clarity around who it is that you're hiring and when you're hiring. So I didn't hire anyone until I was like three or four years in. Um, and then I could see this, the person that I hired, they had an online course and I knew that was a direction I wanted to go. And so I bought their online course and made them promise that they would teach me how they built it. And so it was like, I knew with certainty exactly what I wanted from them. And I knew that they knew how to do it. And so that was like my first investment, but it was a few years down the road when I had a lot of clarity of like, this is the type of business I want to move into, if that makes sense. Yes, definitely. Awesome. Okay. Next question. So, okay. So this is a big theme that I know has been coming up a little bit more recently in more of your episodes because I've been listening to so many of them and, and I love hearing about it, how ADHD shows up in business and how we as, you know, business owners or entrepreneurs or whatever, how do we manage that? And so I just wanted to know if you had any tips, like, so I have ADHD and OCD. And so like, the, you know, I'm actually able to really like hyper focus when I'm very passionate about the thing. Yes. Um, and I, you know, do much better and learn faster by going like really narrow and really deep. Yeah. Um, so sort of like having lots of choices or just like doing things generally, they, it doesn't hold my interest as much. And I just don't feel like it, I get much accomplished that way. Um, so, you know, and I want to know, like, when it comes to like learning and doing things for business, is there, is there a like a point where you are too niched down for it to be productive, and you need to like zoom back out? And if so, how does someone like me with this brain figure out where that line is and how to do that? Oh my gosh, this is such a good question. You know, it's so funny, Allison, because I was recently thinking about like college and I can remember like specific classes that very much caught my interest and I was like super obsessed with and then other classes where I couldn't have cared less. Like I'll never forget the branding class and they were talking about like product placement on shelves and like the colors and like all these things and I was like obsessed. And so our brains are very much wired for like what we are super curious about or passionate about, which I think is super powerful. Now, I do not think you could go too niche. And I actually think this is going to be something that's going to unlock what you're looking for is if you could say like, I am a copy editor or a copywriter for a specific person, right? Like a specific type of business. And one thing that I think would be super powerful for you is looking at what sort of content do you joyfully consume? Like, where do you find yourself looking at forums? Where do you find yourself seeking out articles or creators? If you're, again, you already said this, like, you're like, I'm already reading their content. I'm finding yeah. these errors. But like, if you can get really clear and start to serve a smaller audience, but like, you're really good at that one thing. One, you're going to enjoy your work so much more because you're actually copy editing things that you want to be reading, or you're writing things that you're actually excited about and passionate about. And I think that this is really powerful because you already expressed you were in a position. It didn't meet your values. It didn't really fuel your why. Like there wasn't that like passion. So this is your chance to actually build that. And if we go too broad, you could be building a business that you don't love. And that right. is not what we want you to do. So I think that the niches is going to be really powerful and just getting really honest. And the cool thing is, is that those niches that you're serving can totally evolve, right? So maybe this year it's a certain thing, but now you've got experience, you've got testimonials, you've got connections. Maybe next year you're going in a little bit different of an area. You're just kind of pivoting a little bit. Um, and so I think that's really powerful. Now, one thing that I think is what my recommendation was, and I was thinking about this last night as I was going to bed, is that with ADHD, a lot of our like executive functions suck. Like that is where I get really stressed out. I get super overwhelmed. Stupid things like mail, 
email, text messages, like all of these different things. And so when I was thinking about your first question about like investing in a coach or something, I was like, man, you could pay like 2% of what you would pay a high-end coach and have a virtual assistant help you in those areas that really stress you out or make you feel frantic or make you feel like you're behind in. And so like to me, let's say you had $1,000, I would way rather pay an assistant $20 an hour to do some of those executive functions, like responding to people, like helping with email templates, like different things that, that can come from you, but be systemized to free you up to stay in that creative genius zone that you're in. And so like when I'm looking at investment and like where I would go, especially with someone with ADHD is really starting to pay attention to the things that you hate doing or the things you avoid doing that are required to have a business and start to look for support in areas in that way. And one thing that I think is really powerful is once you start getting clients, it's so easy to legitimize that expense because your per hour rate is gonna be significantly higher than the rate of a virtual assistant. And so you could say like, hey, if I do three hours of copy editing and pay a virtual assistant one hour, they're gonna save me three more hours that I could be doing more copy editing or writing. And so um, that is something that I think is like stage two, once we start to get that social proof and you start to bring in that income, but, with ADHD, one thing that I would recommend is almost having a notepad on the side of your desk and writing down the tasks you either dread, the tasks you're avoiding, the tasks you hate, and really just start to pay attention because there are people who love doing those things and they come alive doing those things. And so you don't have to do it. But here's what I'll say. It is really helpful when you're starting out as a business owner to wear every hat just so that you know what goes into it how you want it to be handled and heaven forbid that person leaves or quits you aren't gonna like be flailing and so every role in my company i've played at one point or another and so i have empathy for the person doing it and understanding but i also give them the autonomy to kind of craft that role into a position that they enjoy as well that's really great advice <laughs> i love that i love that and like the whole idea of you know, being able to sort of like work with someone else and yeah. sort of give somebody else an opportunity so that they can grow their own business and, you know, and in the way that they want to, that sort of symbiotic type of thing, being able yeah. to put that into place like as soon as possible is like for me is in whatever form that takes, um, just feels like really good. And it feels yes. really motivating and just, you know, something that will help me stay focused on my, you know, purpose of, you know, people basically yes. everything surrounds yes. people right yes and your genius spots you get to stay in your genius zones much more which yeah. then just makes you love it because what i don't want you to do is to build a business that you someday resent or that you hate or that becomes something that you don't enjoy right because you said like this next stage of life i want freedom i want passion i want alignment and it's like, we have to be so strategic at the bricks that we're laying right now so that five years from now and 10 years from now and with that longevity, you're building something so in alignment with what you actually want for your life that it's like so beautiful. Like building a business can be so beautiful. It's absolutely hard, don't get me wrong. But it can be such a beautiful thing because you can continually like redirect and course crack throughout the way to really build something awesome. And I think a lot of women listening are either terrified that they're gonna build it the wrong way or they're five years in and they hate what they've built. And so it's like, this is a very exciting time, but it's also a very intentional time. Yes, and I feel the weight of all of that. That whole yeah. like, you know, wanting to be free to make decisions and pivot and all this other stuff. Yeah. And also knowing it's so important and like, yes. you know, I'm 48, so I'm not, it's not like I'm 25 doing this and don't have kids yet or anything like that. So there's even more pressure, I guess, like behind it to kind of like try to figure it out quicker than, yep. than it, totally. you know, in other circumstances. And yep. so, yeah, so it's definitely a... a a balance of trying to figure out how to do it all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like everything absolutely. else. Absolutely. Okay, next question. Okay, so um, so this is also sort of related to um, uh, ADHD and and things in a way, but can probably pertain to almost anyone. Um, yeah. uh, so regarding like mood regulations and sort of like the frequency, at least for me, I can't speak for 
Anybody else? Because you know, like how Tracy Otsuka had said on um, a recent episode, like if yeah. you know one person with ADHD, you know one person with ADHD. Yes. So yes. yeah, it's really hard for me to talk in generalities when when I'm like, well, maybe other ADHD people don't do that. But um, so like frequent moods up and down, and you know, I have anxiety, I have depression. You know, I have kids, and I'm also perimenopausal. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to know if there's any way that if you like for how you would manage when you don't know what your energy yeah. level is going to be like, what your brain clarity is going to be, all of those things on any given day, sometimes throughout the day, um, yes. and still be able to sort of do the work, put in the work yeah. that needs to be done at the end of the day, because, you know, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I just, I have a trouble figuring out how people do that. And yet I see there are people doing that and have done that. And yeah. I just would love to know more about how to handle that. Well, I'm definitely not an expert in this, but I can happily share my experience with it as well. And just thank you for your vulnerability in asking that question and how you framed it. Cause I think everyone is different, right? And one thing that's super interesting, I've been really digging into like human design and just trying to like understand like how, what days to push myself and what days to listen and honor myself and all these different things, right? And so I feel like this is something we're gonna be unpacking for the rest of our lives, um, which again can be very exciting, but also can be daunting. Here's a few things that I would love to have you think about. So one of the things, I learned this in Marie Forleo's Time Genius course, but like the average person can be, highly productive for only four hours a day. And it's wild when you think that like most people are working eight, nine, 10 hours a day, but like really focused work is usually capped around four hours. Now it can be a little bit greater, great, a little bit less. But when I learned that it really helped for me to figure out like, how do I want to block my days? And for the last few years, my oldest daughter was in half day school. So she was gone from eight to noon. So I was like, those are my four hours of like deep work. Like this is when I can actually focus. This is when the house is quiet. And I've kind of adopted this rhythm of figuring out, okay, I can really deeply focus for four hours. And then it doesn't mean I'm only working four hours a day. It just means that I leave more like free flowing space in the afternoon to do my work in a way that feels right, that honors my rhythm. This year, one thing that I'm doing that I've never done in over a decade of entrepreneurship is really building out structure to my week so that I can kind of honor what has worked the best for me. So for example, we switched to a four day work week, which has been amazing um, for all of us. There's a lot of interesting science behind it um, and just like the passion and the joy, but also the productivity behind it. Um, and so Fridays are off. And so I've started doing like no calls on Monday so I can do deep work on Monday. And then like blocking, like Tuesdays are for recording, Wednesdays are for meetings, Thursdays are for wrapping everything up in reviews. And so one thing that I would just encourage is think more so instead of looking at a full eight hour day, think about like four productive hours and start paying attention to your natural energy cycles to see if that's when you can do your most focused work. And then also one thing that's been really helpful for me is like a lot of productivity hacks just don't work for me, right? Because of our neurodivergence. It's just like great that it works for other people, but it doesn't work for me. But figuring out the different things that can actually support you, your energy and your mood. So for example, today I have a bunch of interviews. Last night I came into my office. I got everything set up so that I could just sit down. Now I was running in one minute before my first interview because that's how my brain works. But but everything was ready, right? So I went to bed knowing everything is set up, everything's plugged in, all the cords are ready, all I have to do is just hit on. And so just start starting to figure out like how can you set yourself up for success? What does deep work look like? When, um, when can you add more fluidity to your schedule? What sort of rhythm works best for you? And so especially when you start working with clients, Maybe it's batch batching all the calls into one day. Maybe that drives you crazy and you're like, I just want to do one call per day. And so really just noting and honoring that. And the cool thing about entrepreneurship, and I know that some people might push back on this, is that we do get to establish our own rhythms. I know that it's a privilege to be like, I'm not doing any calls on a Monday. Like not many people have the privilege to be like, no, I'm unavailable. But what's super beautiful about building your business is like, I'm still working my butt off on Mondays, but it's a different type of work, right? I'm just unavailable for certain things. And so when it comes to ADHD and mood and all these different things, you got to just really start tuning in. And I think one of my biggest misses in entrepreneurship, and I just want you to avoid this, is that 
I like was just a pusher, right? Like I, I said my biggest fault and like something I often fall back on is like, I just work harder so I can work harder. And like, I'm done yeah. with that. And so it's like, how can you kind of honor your instincts and honor how you are actually feeling in that day while also providing some of the structure that our brains actually need to be successful and finding that balance? That's, yeah, that's all really, really good practical stuff that I can put into place almost immediately. Like the, even the tip you said, um, I guess it was the mise en place yes, that, yes. That, that I learned about from yes. listening to your conversation with Marie. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it, it's like those sorts of things make so much sense. And I think to an extent, I think that's sort of in the past, maybe been one of my hacks that I didn't even realize was probably a really good thing for me to do consistently. Yes. And that that's it. Like being able to be aware of the fact that these things like lead to better results yeah. as opposed to the way I currently am, which is basically if you don't have that awareness and you do it occasionally, you're not really putting like connecting the dots there. So you're right. not likely to keep doing it over and over again. Yes. So yeah. No, yeah, I, finding I, and those the thing about con- yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say finding those little things that like help get you into that deep work, because for us, deep work is so hard. Like, like you said, like if we're super passionate, we can like get into a flow state and like look up and it's like the lights are out. It's dark outside. Oh, my gosh. Where did today go? But that happens rarely for people with ADHD. And it's like, we almost have to crack the code on like how to get ourselves into that state and how to create an environment that allows us to. And so you have this beautiful opportunity of kind of really honing in on that at the beginning so that that's a consistent thing that you attribute with work and not just like a random spur of the moment. Like, oh, today I did deep work. It's like something you can almost plan for, which is beautiful. Right. And so when you mean um, like that focused trying to get into that state of like focus and deep work when you know like okay so like I take my dog to to uh, daycare a couple days a week because yeah. he's so energetic that like yes. he needs to be around 50 other puppies or whatever so I like I know I have no distractions when he's there and my yeah. kids are all in school and my husband's at work and everything like that so I'm like I literally you know I can schedule things like that it can't be yes. every day but like it's yes. you know I, I can choose which days and what times of the, the, the day that those are. But during that deep period, um, I guess, I guess, yeah, for, for me right now, like, I don't know what to do during that time. Like, I, yeah. I, I'm like, cool, I have this time carved out. And then I sit down and I just, because I don't have the ability to know where to go next, yep. because everything seems important, yes. everything seems urgent and, yes. and everything. I don't know what to do during those four hours. Yeah. So I don't know. If, um, let's break that down. So what, yeah. okay, so let's break down some of those tasks that feel important to you and let's walk through them. Cause we can kind of talk about like nice to haves when starting a business and then like need to haves when starting a business. Cause there's a big differentiator, but everything feels like a need to have. And so let's talk through. So give me a list of four to five things that feel super important. And then we can kind of break them down each by one thing. Well, I guess the thing that keeps, you know, coming to the top of the list is client acquisition. Yes. Like, how am I going to find people, you know, who are willing to work with me? Mm-hmm. And, you know, for right now, I, I'm just happy to be doing work you know, and to basically try to test out, do my methods and, you know, work in real life because, yeah. you know, I don't know, I might think something in theory sounds really good and then, you know, it, it would all fall apart right away. So the sooner I can get more of that sort of tweaking and and um, and practice in, I feel yeah. like the more confident I'm going to get in what I'm doing and my ability to deliver. Yeah. So like right now, it's just sort of like, you know, just finding anybody who needs my, you know, who needs my help. And that in and of itself to me is a block. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about that. I see a problem. How do you feel most comfortable getting clients? So would it be like cold outreach, social media, um, you know, through your website and SEO, like which ways of getting clients, word of mouth, um, you know, local community. There's so many different ways you can get clients. Which way or ways resonates with you the most? So, yeah. So if I was, if I was being really honest yeah. about, I guess the likelihood that 
that these things are going to pan out. I guess that's yeah. the thing. Like things like SEO and being found and everything to me seems super daunting because yep. I don't know much about any of that. Yep. So like so I drop have a website, one. but that's yeah. a that's a nice to have, not a need to have. Yeah. So um I like it happening more organically. Like I like, I, I'm in, um, you know, I have a really strong like LinkedIn community and, you know, I'm in Facebook communities that are other small businesses and, and, and things like that, ADHD moms, like all sorts of things like that. And, you know, I don't know, like, I feel like I just sort of keep my eyes open okay. when I'm in those places to see yep. if ever opportunities arise. But at the same time, that's not the whole reason I'm there. Not at this point. I don't yeah. know if some da way down the line being strategic like that. But yeah. for right now, it's just sort of like, oh, I have like I fall down this rabbit hole. Like I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Maybe I need that too. And I'll click on it and then I'll see this person's website. And I'm like, wow, they do some really cool things. And then I'll read it and I'll be like, oh my gosh, like they have three typos on their homepage. And it's not in a judgmental way. It's yeah. literally just in a sort of almost like a surprised way, sort yeah. of like, like, oh, I wonder if they know that this is even here. And, and, you know, I, and then I, and then it starts the spiral of like, mm, what if it's turning certain customers off that these people are trying to attract and, you know, and okay. trying to figure I, out like. I love this. <laughs> okay. So here's what I would say. So you're taking a more passive approach and I think we need to get a little bit more active in it. So I, I honor the organicness that you want, the nature of how you want it to be. But I also think that you're doing a disservice to your potential clients as well as your gifts by not being more active in the role of acquiring customers. So here's one thing I would love to have you think about. And again, I told you before this call, certain things I say just might viscerally not align with what you envision, but just hear me out on this one. And this might be something that 30 days from now, you're like, okay, I'm willing to give this a try. So let's say you land on somebody's homepage and you notice the three typos. There's a program called Loom where you can record your screen and your little picture in the, in the corner. And you could really quickly just say, hey, I love your website. My name is Allison. I am a copywriter and a proofreader. And I just wanted to give you a heads up. Your website is amazing. You are attracting so many amazing people. I can't help myself, but I noticed a few mistakes. And I just wanted to send this over to add a little value in case you have the bandwidth to pop in and fix them. And you can just literally walk people through the mistakes on their site and be like, if you have any need for additional services or if there's anything you want to get in front of my eyes, please hit reply to this email. Let's connect. And something like that, you're adding value, you're introducing yourself, you're introducing your services, and you're serving people right off the bat. In fact, I'm pretty sure you did that for us. Didn't you reach out with a typo that we had? And like, I did. But that, but I know that was part so of why we content. chose you is that you were active <laughs> in serving us with your gifts like that made us pay attention to you so i want you to know that that's a service right like you actually did something beneficial to us and that was part of the reason why we chose you is like you're an active member of our community who's engaged with what we're doing and so i just think that like i have hired people off of cold pitches like that on a loom video because they saw a gap that i didn't even know i had one so it's like a blind spot and two they were right there to offer to help fix it i didn't have to go out looking i didn't have to go search on linkedin for other copywriters this person has already proved that they're good they gave me value for free right so tell me does that resonate with you or does it give you the heebie-jeebies no, that completely resonates me be, with me because I have done this in small batches, just not intentionally or like methodically or, and I haven't like sort of like, you know, I haven't like crafted it, it in any way that makes it repeatable. It's just yeah. sort of like a very sort of off the cuff, like, oh, like I don't have a template. I, I don't have, like, I just kind of just do it. Right. Yes. Um, and, and I feel like, there's so much emotion in this and it mm -hmm. surprises me so much yeah. because I think when people think of people like me, yeah. <laughs> like a proofreader or like copy editor, or whatever, someone who notices mistakes, like, like right away yeah. as being this type of person that I feel like I don't want to show up as. And I really at my core don't feel like my heart is, that is my, that is me. Yeah. I'm not sitting here trying to judge people. I'm not trying to shame people. I'm not, only noticing the bad thing. Yes. I'm just, 
happen to, you know, I, while I'm enjoying all the other stuff, say, yeah. hey, this seems out of alignment with everything else I'm seeing about you and your business. Yeah. And, you know, hey, this is my superpower. Like, is this something that like you care about? Yeah. And it's so individual. Like people I think are going to care about these things. Some of them are just like, so what? I'm a recovering perfectionist and, you know, no big deal. Yeah. Like nobody's gonna, not going to buy my product if I have a typo, which is absolutely true. And, and yeah. see, I, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I do totally. agree with that as well. Yeah. Those are not my customers, though. You know, yeah. like, I don't feel like at this point, like, I'm not going to push up against people like that yeah. because they know what they're doing in their own bosses. But, I, yeah. you know, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is, like, I'm just very sort of hesitant to, to make people feel bad or yeah. to turn people off before they even get to know me. But and I, I don't know how. But I think this is a beautiful opportunity to like create a framework around a script of like, I promise I'm not your third grade English teacher. Like, and, and like just making jokes about it and like be like, yeah. you are obviously crushing it with things as is. And so if you want to leave things and keep moving and if done is better than perfect, that's amazing. I just wanted to give you a heads up on this, right? Like, yeah. I think that there's ways that you can communicate all of that because I think it's beautiful, but I also don't want that to hold you back from even like getting yourself in an active position. Like I almost see you if we think of like a sports analogy, which I don't know why, cause I don't even really like sports. You're like sitting on the bench. Like you're not even like ready yeah. to get into the game. And so I feel like we've got to like at least get you in the position where you're communicating with people and starting to build out some of those things. And the beauty thing, beautiful thing is, is that, because you're an amazing writer, I saw your website, it's incredible. You can create these beautiful templates that are heartfelt and honest and here's where I'm at and this is what I do and this is how I do it. And it doesn't have to feel spammy or anything. Again, you're adding value. And one thing that I think about, I think of my friend, Natasha Willis, she was the first person that I hired off of a cold pitch and she had literally just sent me a loom and said, and she took the time to like, understand who I am, what I do. She had listened to my podcast. She knew about my team. And so she like even addressed the loom like, hey, Jenna, Marissa, Kylie, anyone who's watching this video, I've noticed that you guys aren't leveraging this. Give me two minutes to just explain why this would change your business. And like, it was beautiful because it was like, oh, this isn't just like a random person who found me on LinkedIn and found my email and now they're just hitting me up. It actually was like a very thoughtful approach. So I just want to make sure, and I think too, Allison, something that you and a lot of other listeners experience is there's just so much mindset stuff, right? Like I avoided yeah. personal development for as long as I freaking could because I recently heard the quote, like if you want to heal yourself, become an entrepreneur because it's going to bring up <laughs> all of the limiting beliefs that you have, right? And all of these things that you're like, oh my gosh, I thought I was over that or I thought I had processed that. And so I feel like We've got to focus on like two pillars, like your belief in yourself and your gifts, as well as like the systems and structure that will support your neurodivergent brain, but allow you to be creative. And so it's like, how do we make sure that we're growing both of those pillars at a conscious level of really asking yourself like, well, why am I not putting myself out there? Or why am I not being willing to tell this person that I see this and I can help make it better? Um, and so I just feel like it's going to have to be kind of these two things that will really help you. So again, the personal development side of just like addressing some of those ugly shadows that pop up for all of us and that consistently help us grow and really challenge what we believe about ourselves and what's possible for us. But then also creating some of those things like templates, like you said, and structures that still allow you to be really creative, but allow you to come at it from your perspective where you're not shaming anyone. And you're not just looking at mistakes. You're looking at how to impact and the benefits and all these beautiful things. And I think you could have so much fun with this copy. Like I think making fun of it would really actually attract people to be like, I'm not like every other copy editor out there. Like I actually care about this and I'm so excited. Um, and so I think that you have a really beautiful opportunity. That got me excited about <laughs> This has been like twirling around in my mind. I have nobody to bounce any of this stuff off of. So, yes. Like I, yes, that's, that's wonderful hearing you say that. And, and I definitely have issues with owning, <laughs> owning things and, you know, into the point where I'm actually actively doing things as yeah. opposed to worrying about them happening or thinking yeah. I'm how, worrying about how other people are going to perceive me and, and all that stuff. Um, 
Well, you're not and, alone. Yeah. Like I know I'm coming from a, a, a certain place and, and I guess I want to make sure my messaging yep. matches that. Yep. And you um, are the perfect person to ensure that because you write, right? Like you can actually, one thing that I would say, Allison, that might be helpful and you are the writer. So if this is the dumbest thing you've ever heard, just release it. But maybe record a voice memo of all the things of like all the objections that you have. And like, I am not like your English teacher that, you know, slapped your hand with a ruler. And I totally believe done is better than perfect. But I think perfect is better, you know, like just like writing down some of those like analogies and things so that they can show up in your writing. Um, because sometimes it's easier to like say them or when you're thinking them, like get it out of your head so that then like these email templates actually have your soul and your spirit in them. And they're not just these like cold outreach things, um, that they're actually like really beneficial and serving and just like a beautiful introduction to what you do. Thank you so much. Yeah. We have time for oh, one awesome. more question. One more. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. All right. So let's see. I have so many. So can you think of anything? This is just sort of probably more of a general yeah. one. At this point, I feel like I am all in, yeah. right? And I want things to be drastically different a year from now for me. Yeah. I want to, and I have this time and I want to use it intentionally yeah. without burning out. Yeah. Um, so I have a little bit of sort of emergency savings Yep. from like both of my parents passed away in the last few years which is horrible yeah. and um and so what i'm trying to be very intentional about is saying hey maybe i'll take a little bit of money that i have set aside and use it to feed me yep. in a way that's that's going to eventually feed everybody yeah it just might take a little bit of time yeah um so i have like a little bit of cushion there in terms of like finances or whatever um but not like a whole lot yeah <laughs> so i guess that, you know in in the whole scheme of things can you give me an idea like what would be the biggest thing and the fastest way for me to sort of accelerate through this year yeah in a way that maybe you didn't do at the beginning of your um career and could maybe cut a couple corners yeah <laughs> The biggest thing when I was thinking about like different business models that could work for you, I really think that having people on a retainer where you are doing their copy editing and reviewing consistently will one, yeah. help protect your energy, two, give you consistent income, and three, help you build those relationships that I know that you want. You don't necessarily just want one-off jobs, though that would be a fine place to start just to start getting the experience and the testimonials and the money in. But what right. I envision is like you working with people that churn out a lot of content and like every Tuesday you have two hours reserved for this client and every Thursday you have two, you know, because then you can kind of estimate what your income is going to be and it's not necessarily feast or famine and you're not always hunting for new clients. Um, and so I was just trying to think about like, what would that business model look like and how would you do that? And if I were in your position, I would try to get recurring clients that are on retainers so that you can kind of plan your best moods and energies and different things like that while still getting the work done joyfully and also having that, that security that we talked about at the very beginning and having that safety and security in being an entrepreneur. Um, so I would try to look for people that are willing to sign, you know, a one month, three month, six month, year long contract and really mapping out what that would look like. And that will also bring your pool down of potential clients from like thousands of people, anyone on the internet to, you know, you only need 10 clients, right? Like it just really right. helps narrow that pool. And for me, like when I was a wedding photographer, at first I wanted to appeal to every bride and groom that was out there in the state of Wisconsin or like in the world. And then I was like, no, 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 I just need 20 brides and grooms from the state of Wisconsin to say yes to me and I will meet my goal. And so it really helped for me to make sure that I was reaching out to the right people, that I was showing the right type of work, that I was, you know, building relationships with the right type of people. And it just kind of helped bring in my focus so that it wasn't so wide. It felt overwhelming and paralyzing. Okay. That's awesome. You're awesome. This has been so helpful. Oh, I'm <laughs> Thank so Thank you so thankful. much for this opportunity. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Allison, because there are going to be gold diggers out here who need you, they've been listening to this as a student, but now I'm going to paint the lens for them. You need Allison. 
you need Allison. There's so many things. I probably need Allison. There's so many people out there who were not born copywriters, AKA basically all of us who are not great with grammar, me. Um, if you are listening to this and you need someone like Allison in your life, Allison, where can people find you and connect with you and hire you for your beautiful brain and the services that you're going to provide? So you can first find me um, at my website. So that's www.ifixate.com. An homage to my OCD. Nice. <laughs> um, and that's also my Instagram handle, ifixate. Um, and I hang out on LinkedIn a lot just for fun. Awesome. <laughs> um, so I'm Allison M. Saunders on LinkedIn. Oh, thank you so much for doing this. I am so excited to watch you grow. Can't wait to see where you are a year from now. And here's a reminder to not overthink everything and to put yourself out on the field so that you can start scoring because I'm so excited to watch what you do. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you have a quick second, take a second, make sure you're subscribed to my show. And if you love today's marketing tips, tricks, strategies, and life talk, then check out this episode. You are going to love so it. So I was recently at a mastermind and we were on the closing day sharing our closing thoughts. And my friend Jim Quick was sitting right next to me and he said something so poignant. The topic was comfort zones. And essentially what he said is that there are two types of hard that nearly everyone is experiencing. The hardness that comes when you're stuck inside of your comfort zone, but also the hard that comes when you're trying